On today's edition of the Lockdown Eagles podcast, we take a first look at the rematch of Super Bowl 57 this Monday night between the Eagles and the Chiefs. Could this be the biggest game of Jalen Hurts' career if he does win it? Are you over the Super Bowl loss yet? All that and more on this Tuesday edition of Lockdown Eagles. You are Locked On Eagles, your daily Philadelphia Eagles podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This episode of the Lockdown Eagles podcast is brought to you by Jace Medical. Empower yourself when you purchase a Jace case, providing you with a personal supply of five antibiotics that treat 50 infections and more. Get yours today at jacemedical.com. That's J-A-S-E medical.com. We thank you so much for making Lockdown Eagles your first listen each and every day right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network. I'm Louis DiBiase, joined as always by Gino Camilleri. What a matchup we have coming up on Monday night between, I think, the two best teams in the NFL. It's the two teams that played in the Super Bowl last year. It's the two one seeds in the AFC and the NFC. It's the Philadelphia Eagles and the Kansas City Chiefs. And man, Gino, this one has... It's storyline palooza. It's a battle of a lot of strengths against strengths, weaknesses against weaknesses. Can't wait to get into this matchup. We've got four shows, five shows to do it. This is the one that I'm looking at that everybody has been looking at and saying, how are the Eagles going to stack up once again against arguably the best team in the National Football League, according to whoever you talk to? One thing is for certain, Patrick Mahomes is always the guy that getting a win against him, that's... That's a, I mean, that's taking down the king, right? Like that's yeah. the big name that you're hunting, right? And Randy Orton back in the day in the WWE used to call himself like the legend killer when he would go up against like these big names. It's like, that's one of the guys that you're looking at, right? It's like every time you go up against Pat Mahomes, can your quarterback mm-hmm. and your team keep pace with that team? He's new Brady, about, right? Yeah. He's new what, LeBron. Oh, yeah. and I mean, that's Jay what Hertz it is. is 100%. Our Steph Curry or Peyton Manning. Like that's, that's what it is. Dude, that's a great way to look at it. Yeah. Like can this te- this warrior like team that's just like assembled pretty well with a lot of homegrown talent and acquiring some guys, maybe AJ Brown is that Kevin Durant piece for this team. Can they take on the best player in football? one of the best players that we have seen. It's actually and not, exactly the way to look at it. Yeah, this really could be Cavs yeah. Warriors-esque. In a way. I mean, in a way, it kind of is, right? And I think the ultimate respect to a really good player is when you start to compare guys to him. Is he the next X, Y, Z? Like Caleb Williams, he's the next Pat Mahomes. I watched this guy against Oregon the other night. The dude looks just like Pat Mahomes, but a finally rep- – a polished and refined Patrick Mahomes of who he is today. And Patrick Mahomes isn't the first guy he was in his first two years. He is an elite killer by picking apart defenses, destroying this new age cover seven, cover eight. We're going to yeah. drop all these guys into coverage. We're going to beat you underneath death by a thousand cuts in a way. Patrick Mahomes has changed the paradigm to which defenses are constructed because no longer can you have these guys that can go out there and just be single gap players? Like you can't have guys that right. aren't like Jordan Davis anymore. You have to take away the run. Yeah, he almost because, revived the nose tackle. In a right. Way because you have to drop so many two. guys into coverage. Yeah. 100%. And he brought back cover two being like the main coverage scheme. Whereas I feel like before that, you know, the Legion of boom kind of made it some different looks, right? And yeah. Mahomes, cover three. We're going to go yeah. even on the front. A hundred percent. And it's not just Mahomes. It's a new era of these mobile quarterbacks with big arms, you know, Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, mm-hmm. Joe Burrow, Jalen hurts is one of those guys, but yeah, Mahomes really does lead the way he is. Tom Brady even said it himself, I think in a podcast last week, like if you had to compare someone to you or who's the next you, which of course there's going to be nobody like Tom Brady, but who would that be? And he instantly said Patrick Mahomes, right? And I think that makes sense. He's the only younger quarterback with a Super Bowl ring and more. He's got two of them right now. So this is the guy everybody is going to be gunning after. After, And the Eagles are the team right now that has the best crack at taking down the King. And I think it's they have the guy that has the best chance in Jalen Hurts, who in the last game they played in Super Bowl 57, he outperformed Mahomes. I, I do genuinely think, Gino, it's interesting to – it would be interesting to ask like general managers this – If you had to start a team right now and you had to start with one quarterback, like would Mahomes and Hurts be one and two? It it might be the conversation that these are the two best quarterbacks in football. 
it's an excellent discussion and the way i'm looking at it is i hope this turns into something that can be compared to with the Brady and the Peyton Manning. How cool would that be? Like rivalry. your team has that kind of storyline with your quarterback. That that would be awesome. It might be closer to like the Ben Roethlisberger with one of those big names because Peyton and Tommy was they're just a, a destined match waiting to happen. But like sure. the times that Pittsburgh went up against the big guns, they took him out when they had to, right? Like hopefully that's Jalen Hurts. Like the times he has to go up against the Chiefs, what the Super Bowl would be his third no fourth time going up against yep. Kansas city. This, I mean, that's what we look forward to are these type of battles. Like long are the days where the NFC least where we're oh, Lou, there's a clip that they put out on the Philadelphia Eagles, YouTube of Jason Kelsey throughout the years. Fran Duffy does a great job talking over it. And some of the guys that they were playing with out there and some of the quarterbacks, you're like, Dude, Mike Kafka was the quarterback, and now we're watching Jalen Hurts, and it's, it's fun, such a man. far like the evolution. The fact that your team you are. is in the conversation where we're talking about could this quarterback battle with your guy be the new Brady Manning, LeBron, Steph? Like the fact that that's your team, that's your quarterback, that's really fun. And we're not saying like Hurts is ever going to completely dethrone Mahomes, where he gets you know four rings and Mahomes has three. Mahomes already oh, yeah, has two. Win one. Right? I, I think Mahomes is the Brady, but. You can have Jalen be your Peyton or your Rodgers or that guy that gets at least one to two. I think he is going to get one. It's not like the NBA where it feels like all these stars eventually do get rings. But Jalen, to me, like outside of Mahomes, might be the guy I would bet the most ends up winning one. Just because in the AFC, too, like look at now the Bills are on the come down and the Bengals have been so up and down. I don't know. My money would be on Jalen and the Eagles. Outside of the Chiefs, they've been the most consistent team over the last – you know, two years and even before that, before Hurts. Maybe I was thinking of Roethlisberger in terms of like how many times they played, but maybe it's more like Eli Manning, right? Where you would sure meet Tom Brady in the regular season a couple times and then yeah. the big matchup is the Super Bowl, right? Yeah, maybe and that's I, what it is. Yeah. May, I think that would be, I mean, he's a way better player than Eli Manning. Like, let's but I'll sign up for two straight. rings that way. Fine. Oh, yeah. like, Mahomes can win seven. In I, all you time tell, Super Would you Bowl sign up for games, that right now? Yeah. Like, yes, Mahomes wins seven rings, but Jalen gets two. Give me that right now. I'll sign up for that right now. So in the next 10 years, we have yeah. three Super Bowl rings. Yeah, yeah. Dude, 100%. Like, get, get what are we even <laughs> arguing about? No, like, yeah, that's the easiest of yes course, you'll ever course. take. Because one thing that it ultimately says, Lou, is when you're getting to the top of the mountain and like you want to be the mountain, beating that guy, it's not like Peyton and Tom where it's like, oh, you still have to go win another game. Like right, you could right. take your AFC championship win, like, oh, that's really cool. But Tom mm -hmm. also lost a couple to the Giants. If you're getting to the Super Bowl, you're beating all the teams in the way, and then you have to go and fight the ultimate boss, which is Pat Mahomes. Mm -hmm. And that's just – that's even bigger. And that's why I think we respect 2017 so much is because that's what it was. It's like you got through the yeah, gauntlet, and then Brady. there's Bowser at the end of the tunnel, and, like, now we got to <laughs> fight him in Bowser's castle. Here we go. Yeah, exactly. I think they really are the two best quarterbacks. I would choose these two to start a franchise with over anybody. There's so many good mobile young quarterbacks in the league right mm -hmm. now, but you know, when you add the mobility to the processing, the accuracy, the arm talent inside the pocket, these are the two best guys statistically. And just you look at the eye test this year, nobody's throwing the ball better than Jalen Hurts inside the pocket. And look at what Mahomes is doing with the receiving cast that's as underwhelming as it was last year. I mean, last year it wasn't great losing Tyree Kill. They had Juju Smith Schuster. They don't even have him anymore. It's like Rashi Rice. It's Marquez Velvet Scatling. It's Sky Moore and Kadarius Tony. And yet Mahomes is still seven and two, the one seed and a top three MVP candidate. Very, it seems very similar to the Rodgers post Jordy Nelson years. Like once yeah. those guys started or to get very a little Patriots -esque, older. Patriots-esque, man. It's like Brady at times was throwing to Brandon LaFell and right. Tom Tompkins, but it did not matter. It's it's a tale of two different teams to an extent where yeah. both of the quarterbacks are elevating the team, but Pat Mahomes is is doing a lot with a little in terms of what he well, has. That's why on your offense. LeBron comparison is great. It's very Warriors Cavs, where LeBron also had his Kelsey, aka Kyrie. Yeah, but he didn't have as much talent as the Eagles roster does as that Warriors roster had. Yeah, like he has his Kevin Love yeah, there. Like he's got, similar, he's got yeah. a decent supporting cast, but like mm -hmm. that Warriors team, like the Eagles, that offense is so stacked. But now. Kansas City, they're so good that their defense is becoming very good. And the same thing with it's the elite. Eagles. It's, it's the storyline of how these two teams came to be. 
Andy Reid built this team from the inside out. He leaves, he goes to Kansas City, does the same exact thing, and history intertwines. Here we are all these years later, Lou, 20 years after Andy Reid first became the coach, and both of these teams are competing at the highest level, and it's not because of happen circumstance. It's because they understand what football comes down to, and that is, is the ultimate measure. Can you beat the be- can you beat Andy Reid, one of the best coaches? Can you beat one of the best collection of executives and and defensive coordinator and Steve Spagnolo and bringing in just guys that can replicate what you do in terms of culture? It's the new Patriots. It's the new Tom. It's the new it everything you want to be in an organization. And to yeah. beat them, to get a little bit of revenge, but to take this game in stride and know what it means that it could be a great litmus test for you moving forward. That's what I would look forward to the most. Can we hang with the best of the best and know that Mm -hmm. come February, we can kick the rear ends once again. That would be good to know. It's not going to be easy if Jalen Hurts pulls it off. Could it be his most impressive win of his career? We'll get into that coming up next right here on the Lockdown Eagles podcast. which is brought to you by Jace Medical. Go online right now at jacemedical.com to receive your 12-month supply on your daily medication. Remember to use our promo code LOCKDOWN at checkout for a discount as well. If you or someone you love would like to get some peace of mind by having a year supply of any daily medication, go to jacemedical.com to see if it's offered for you. Remember, use that promo code LOCKDOWN for $20 off your purchase. Jace Medical includes the Jace case, which provides five life-saving antibiotics for emergency use. All it takes to get a Jace case is fill out a simple online form and in some cases jump on a quick call with one of their board certified physicians, get ongoing care from their physicians on any treatment related questions. They're doctor created, doctor recommended. I live in New York, had a couple blizzards last year. Jace Medical in those situations could really come through. Once again, head over to jacemedical.com to get the Jace case. See if it's offered for you. Remember to use our promo code LOCKEDON in all capital letters, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N for $20 off your purchase. We thank you so much for making Lockdown Eagles your first listen each and every day. Guys, Lockdown is kicking up our coverage with Lockdown NFL Kickoff Live. Each Friday, Lockdown will go live at 2 p.m. Eastern time on every Lockdown NFL YouTube channel. Host Tanitra Batiste, Jarvis Davis, Kyle Krabs, they'll break down every game on the NFL slate to get you ready for your team's matchup, your fantasy lineups, betting angles, all that and more. Plus, get the in-depth local analysis from our stable of NFL hosts across the country who know these teams better than anybody else. Find Lockdown NFL Kickoff Live every Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern time on any Locked On NFL YouTube channel. So it's Eagles Chiefs this Monday night, a rematch of Super Bowl 57. And Gino, I don't know, like this game, you talked, kind of laid it out at the end of the segment, how tough this is going to be and how it's a litmus test. Like it's not the revenge game that would be in Super Bowl 58 in Vegas, right? Because even if you, if the Eagles win this game, like, yes, I'm sure it would feel great to not lose a Kansas City twice in a row. It's more you don't want to – it's less that you want to win this game, and it's more that you just don't want to lose it, right? Because heading into a Super Bowl rematch again, if you've lost twice, it's – you know, that could play some mental head games for you. So I think that's a key, but this Chiefs team, it's not going to be easy. Mahomes, Kelsey, Andy Reid, they're the big three, kind of your new NFL version of Brady and Belichick. But that defense is elite as well. Jalen Hurts going to have to go on the road, primetime football, with that rematch storyline, with an elite defense, and – the other best quarterback in football you're going up against. I don't know, man. Like, this might be, if he pulls this off, it might be the most impressive win that he's had, even though he's led a team to a Super Bowl. It's an interesting way to look at how we view games, right? Because would this be looked at the same if they didn't play in the Super Bowl last year? I think it would be held in a higher regard, in my opinion, because you don't know what he could do. Yeah, it's a good I, point. I've already seen kind of what they could do, right? And that's what I compare. I know I use the Oregon comparison a lot, so I'll switch it up. But Michigan, Ohio State, right? Like most of the time they're going to meet at the end of the year. If they get back to the playoff, like that's really the game that is going to matter. Like if you lose by three points, Oregon loses to Washington by three points on a missed field goal. They're probably going to meet in the Pac-12 championship yet again. That's when it matters. That win still looks good on paper. That's why the Super Bowl, it's like, yeah, it it definitely stings. But at the same time, you didn't lay a stinker. Like, I think losing that way, it definitely hurts. But Peyton Manning losing 40-whatever to eight against Seattle – yeah, that's an embarrassment. I, I getting emba- like what TCU did against Georgia. 
you never want to have that moment. If you go into Monday Night Football, you're eight and one, and that happens. There's some bigger question marks that you probably are going to have to look at. But if you hang in this game and it's a one score game and you lose the turnover battle by one on a, on a sloppy like fumble exchange or something, or a bounce goes your way and maybe you win the turnover differential and things could have went differently for the Chiefs, but you squeak it out. I, I It's not something that's going to encapsulate who this team really is, but it's going to make you feel good moving forward because you know, I keep going back to the litmus test. You know where you are in terms of temperature when it comes to the well, national Jaylen football. Especially, right? And you know that if these teams play again in the Super Bowl, you know what Jalen Hurts can do. And he was elite in 2022, but the Super Bowl last year really, Gino, was the birth of, I think, who is the passer we've seen Hurts become in 2023, right? I mean, mm-hmm. of four historic quarterback performances we have seen as Eagles fans in two Eagles Super Bowls over the last six years, you look at Nick Foles, Tom Brady, Patrick Mahomes, Jalen Hurts. He might have had the best performance of any of those four. So we know from that litmus test, he's already past that. He doesn't look out of sorts with any of them. I think you he fits right in, right? Like that's that's the one thing when you look back at all the quarterbacks that have either won or lost Super Bowls. It's like Trent Dilfer won a Super Bowl. Like he doesn't belong in this conversation with some of the greats. And like that performance from Jalen. If he wins it, you're talking about a, a top two performance ever as a, as a winning said quarterback. He maybe should have still won MVP of the Super Bowl. I mean, he, he carried the team outside of one small play, but yeah. this, this is a good one. And, and you can't look at it as that next Super Bowl, right? Like there are teams right, that it's will not. look. It, it's, it's not. It's a week 10 matchup or no week 11. It'll be at that time. Right, you're and eight and one. It's an out of conference game when yeah. you're going to have an easier game against Buffalo the next week. And there's an opportunity for it to be a look ahead spot where you're playing San Francisco in two weeks. But to for what it would mean, Lou, to go on the road to Arrowhead, which in my opinion is yeah. the closest environment you'll get to one SEC college football and two like European right. soccer environment on Monday to, night football on Monday night football to operate on a silent count the entire game on a national stage where you just lost to this team against a great defense, against a great coach. That's what I'm saying. You're talking about that. should give you chills just thinking about it. Right. Right. It's not Super Bowl 2.0 between the Eagles and the chiefs, but for Jalen hurts, it would be to me the most impressive win he's had even over the playoff wins, because obviously they destroyed the giants in the divisional Mm -hmm. round. He won an NFC championship, but even that game against San Francisco, it was early, pretty quick. If he does this against Kansas city, it's not his most impressive game ever. Again, that to me was super bowl 57. He did everything Mm -hmm. it took to get that ring and they just couldn't pull it off. Jonathan Gannon. Uh, But Jalen Hurts, to me, if he pulls this off, yeah, I think it's – honestly, last week might have been his most impressive win to date against the Dallas Cowboys, if you think about mm-hmm. it. And so I think this one would even top that. I think last week is a great argument for it, too, because you talk right? about drafting and wanting to win your division. Man, they went shot for shot. A shootout. Against injury, Dak Prescott. Yeah. Things TV. are going against you. It's – yeah. let's take a, a step back to your point about who you would start a team with. The ultimate thing is – you kind of have to fit, like, can you see this guy lifting a trophy? Like, 100%. 100, like, the leadership is there. The IQ is there. The face of this, he's the face of Philadelphia, right? I mean, there's nobody more beloved than Jalen Hurts in Philadelphia at this point in time. I mean, the Sixers are running a little bit. So are the Flyers. We know what the Phillies did, but he's, we came off of maybe the most hated quarterback in the history of the franchise in Carson Wentz. And to see the turnaround for a year for easy, uh, dude, people still don't <laughs> this like city this glorified kid, Carson Wentz for four years. Let's not, give they them still don't much. like a lot of people. Well, don't now, like him. Yeah. Cause any Eagle that ever requests a trade will be hated forever, but and continue, salts in the continue. locker room after your team wins the Super Bowl. Yeah. That'll kind of do it. Stray too, bullets but, to Carson. But Lou will Gino's, Gino's the king of the Carson Wentz stray bullets on the show. I named my dog <laughs> after the guy, dude. I have to live with it every single day of my I, life. I get your point though. Yes. The quarterback of this city at an eight and one record, of course, he's going to be the most beloved guy. And it, rightfully so, because he's, he stepped up on the biggest of stages and I don't th- just think it's a, it's a Jalen talking point too. Like I think Sean decides in a big spot to like yeah. see the turnaround of what dollar store Andrew Tate did last year in the Super Bowl. To, right, these to defensive now. players, Gino, I'm sure have a chip on their shoulder too. They're the main reason they didn't win that game. Oh, you don't think Slay and Bradbury taking or this Hassan game? Hassan Reddick and Josh Sweat, who yes, were slipping 100%. all over the field and didn't get a chance to hit Mahomes? Yeah, for sure. 
It's it's going to be a physical game. It's going to be one where you're going to have to keep your head. You're not going you're going to have to remember that it like this is this is a game where you can't make those mistakes. Like mm-hmm. you the Derek Barnett inevitable 15-yard penalty that right, hopefully right. he's not even on the field to be in that situation. Like those are the things that can't happen. Kicking it out of bounds after you score can't happen. The turnover differential that you had against the Jets can't happen because you're playing an elite football team and if you want to be considered as such you have to do what elite football teams do, and it's simple, fundamental football, and that's how you beat the Chiefs. Why did they lose, Lou? A fumble from Jalen Hurts. You couldn't make a stop on defense, and you allowed a punt return basically to go to the house. Three of the most simple things in the sport, and it yep. ultimately cost you a trophy. Well, we got to talk about that game coming up next to wrap of the show as much as it hurts. Are we over Super Bowl 57? Seems or like you're how... not with your voice cracking. <laughs> Excuse me. It already, it already made me a little emotional. We'll get into it coming up next right here on Lockdown Eagles. Before we talk about Super Bowl 57 and how much that let us down, one thing that won't let you down is the reliability of the number one sports book in America, the official sports book of LOE, and all of the shows here at the Lockdown Podcast Network. That is FanDuel. Right now, our everydayers and all new customers, you are going to get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. So I will teach you how easy it is in about 15 seconds to get rolling, you download the FanDuel app. You put in the promo code LOCKDOWN. Or if you're on a computer, go to FanDuel.com slash LOCKDOWN. And once you put in a $5 wager on the Eagles to beat the Kansas City Chiefs come Monday night, you will also get $150 back in bonus bets. You can bet on anything, spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. Catch us every Friday doing our LOE3 where we pick player props each and every week and to get in on the action once again go to fanduel.com slash locked on and roll into the nfl season we're getting closer to the playoffs get your futures in get in on the action fanduel an official partner of the nfl all right eagles fans we got to do it to wrap up this tuesday edition of locked on eagles it's the rematch of super bowl 57 eagles chiefs next monday night We've got crossover Thursday for you. Wednesday, we'll take a deeper dive into the matchups of this game. And then Friday, as Gino was talking about, LOE 3, a betting perspective from this game. But again, Super Bowl 57 is not something that we've talked about a lot on this show. We did for about a week, and then we moved on pretty quick because that's how we coped. That, Gino, looking back, is still a game that I try not to think about a lot, but this matchup brings it all back up. So I want to ask the question. I think it's a little bit different for you versus for me, but are you – maybe the question isn't right to be phrased as, are you over Super Bowl 57? Because I don't think you ever get over that kind of loss on that stage in that heartbreaking fashion, but is it something that still genuinely bothers you? No, it doesn't. And yeah. – yeah, I'll right. get right into it. Why? Like you're stronger I'll, than I. <laughs> I'll say it. The, the years that I really remember of my sports fandom were the year I became an Eagles fan, which is the first year that they make it to an NFC Championship. See, I think I'm what too happened, young to go through that, so maybe that's why it hurts me more. I saw it all, Lou. I remember my mom consoling yes, yeah, me in my green, my midnight green and white bedroom after they lose to Carolina and they can't do anything. And Donovan yeah. is hurt. I'm like, see, why? Sorry, you six-year-old me it. couldn't we, feel that. I'm sorry. I felt that. And then, see, like, you're going through what I went through back then. But it's like, yeah. it was just like every year, every year, here we go again, here we go again. And that's right. why 2017 was awesome. You probably, your first feeling at that was I would think Arizona, like NFC championship I was going to say, it's game. kind of embarrassing, but I mean, because I was a younger fan, like the most heartbreak I went through, uh, yeah, it was probably 2008, but after that, it was just like wild card losses to yeah. Saints, Packers, like it Losing really wasn't Losing to Dallas much. three times, right? Yeah, like, right. You got over it, that pretty quick. And, and the thing about those years too was like, Jim Johnson had this unbelievable defense. That's like, nobody could beat this defense. It was like, you had Godzilla and Tom Brady was able to beat him. And you had Terrell Owens, who was like Superman who came back on a broken freaking leg and almost won you a Super Bowl. But I take a step back and I just want to put it like this. When you look at it, I know it's heartbreaking, Mm -hmm. but you didn't lose a game. Like I said, in segment two, like 48 to eight, you lost to two of the best and surefire hall of famers, by a cumulative total of six points across those two games. True. Where in those two games, your quarterbacks accounted for five turnovers. Donovan mm-hmm. McNabb being four of them, but Jalen Hurts had his as well. And it just goes to show you, the 
difference between great to elite, man. Like it's just that little bit. And why yeah. 2017 is great is because Nick Foles played a perfect freaking – he pitched a perfect game in the Super Bowl in the say, moment that mattered the most. That's why – He Super did have an interception that we don't talk about a lot because it was like a punt. Yeah, but it wasn't yeah. really his fault either. Yeah, but no. Super Bowl 57, in a way, because of what you're talking about, how you just barely lost to the next Brady and Belichick, which is Mahomes and Reed, in a shootout where your quarterback outperforms them and you go toe-to-toe and you really should have won that football game, might make it easier to stomach. It honestly makes me appreciate Super Bowl 50, 52 even more. I kept saying because, 57. I meant 52. No, you're good. Yeah, it, it made me all. appreciate Super Bowl 52 even more because it was basically the same game game and you saw the other end of it, it it made me think oh man like so that's what it felt like if Brady ended up pulling it off at the end it's like damn I really can't believe we pulled off that first one like hell yeah that was such a perfect Super Bowl win but I think it even hurts more though because of that because we knew what a perfect Super Bowl win that was to beat the best quarterback in the league in a shootout where your quarterback outduels him to get a ring and you, you remember the good incredible euphoric feeling that was and you could taste it again last year I remember saying during the game like I cannot believe it's happening again like this is literally the same game they're going to do this again with a different quarterback and a different coach and then it got ripped away from you so I think Gino you're right like in a way because you went toe-to-toe with Godzilla basically it makes it, it makes you proud and you know you have a chance again but at the same time, it makes it hurt a little more, too, because you were that much closer. Whereas if you're getting blown out like Broncos, Seahawks, I'm already over it in the first quarter, and you have like three hours to kind of cope. Whereas with this game, it was the very last second. You didn't know what was going to happen. So it's a conflicting, conflicting feeling. To your point on we saw that perfect game. Yeah. It almost felt like you were making a cake in that second game and you were crossing off all the ingredients on the grocery list and you get home and you're like, how did I forget the cake mix and eggs for this cake? And you had your turnover, which was one of the main ingredients that you didn't have in that Super Bowl and a defensive stop. Like you forgot those two things. Just two and plays, yeah. It was just two plays that separated the elite getting a Lombardi trophy and not having that trophy. But at the same time, I know moral victories aren't a thing, but it helped the Eagles learn how to win that you have to play 60 minutes time in and time out. I, I mean, it should have happened in after 2017, but they kind of came out of the gate in 2018 and 19 and forgot That's how to win. Point. Yeah. This really is how, hopefully it helps them. Hopefully it's it not has, something like well, the Buffalo bills were 13 seconds, like a blitz. Now they're dead. Or, yeah. They, or, the yeah. bills died on that field. Like the yeah, bills they're, they're, as we knew it, still buried in no, in seriously, right the bills as we knew it died on that field after the 13 seconds. And that is part of why it was upsetting me right after the loss. You know, two is because I remember the track record of Seattle after a heartbreaking loss to the mm. Patriots in the Super Bowl, the Atlanta Falcons, what happened to these teams after the Buffalo bills after 2021, sometimes teams do not come back from those losses. The track record for Super Bowl losers is not, not always great when it comes to getting back there and then winning it. So you're nervous. Like you think, was that our moment? That was the moment. And maybe you don't get that again, but credit to this team. They have bounced back better than I've seen anybody ever do it. The fact that they went through that and they're eight and one right now, and it looks like they're even better and ready to get back to that stage. Again, they're going to have to actually do it again through the playoffs, but credit to them because that's an impressive feat that they've already overcome. Like the fact that they're eight and one after that is unbelievable. The Eagles just went out there and like, they got their revenge body. They're like, I'm not going to let that. I'm not going to sit around and eat all this ice cream and just like linger. Like I'm going to, I'm hitting the gym where it's like Kobe Bryant, like after losing in the finals, right? Like he's like, I'm going to put up free throws. Like that's, that's the mentality that this team truly does have. And that's why this game is going to be a really good, just test of who they like, do they get too lost in the moment? Like do, do they shoot themselves in the foot because they get, too, too caught up in the bright lights of what this game could be or do sure. they just continue to operate with their mo that every game is just us versus them it's just an it's one and all mentality that's what i'm looking for the most because we know it's two talented teams we know it's going to be splitting hairs of how this game comes down to just being a couple plays yeah but i would love to see the eagles come out just simply from the fact that it's such a disadvantage going to arrowhead with what happened in in that last game, if the Eagles win going into Arrowhead, it's like, oh yeah, we're going in there a little bit smug. Like, we'll sure. we'll go in there with our shiny shoes on. But no, you're going in there with like 
we're wearing the black Air Force Ones. Like, AJ's going to have the black Air Force Ones. Like, things are going to be a little bit different walking into that stadium. And yeah. just take care of business. It's another game and another opportunity to continue to extend your lead on the NFC. That's what it comes back to. Yes. Securing the one seed, how do you do that? You beat good teams. And there's good teams in the NFL, and one of them's playing in Arrowhead Stadium, which is not going to be a quiet environment. I, I suggest yeah. getting some surround sound for that game because listening to Arrowhead just seems a little bit oh, different on the TV. It is one of the stadiums I've always wanted to go to on the road, so this would definitely be a place. Besides that I'd have to their go to down the road. TV monitor, it's like the size of like a GoPro. Yeah. Like, can they upgrade that thing at least? <laughs> like a hundred thousand no, people sure. are looking at something I that's know. twenty miles away. But the fans bring it. It's going to be an intense environment. Storyline galore. We'll continue to dive into it on tomorrow's edition of the show. Thanks so much for making Locked On Eagles your first listen each and every day right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. For Gino Camilleri, I'm Lou DiBiase signing off. We'll see you tomorrow. As always, thank you for downloading. Thank you for watching and listening. And let's go, birds. Fly, Eagles, fly.